Okay, hello everybody. Today we're at the uh, OPNFV event in Berlin and one of the hot topics in the event is uh, orchestration. So what we've got today for you is uh, an example of, of some orchestration capabilities that we're also looking at introducing into the open orchestration environment. So we'll be looking at these uh, use cases that are uh, very much a target for the open orchestration. So we're at the Huawei stand and I'd like to give you an overview of the cloud VPN, end-to-end -end NFE and SDN orchestration capability. So the first thing is uh, we're looking at the end-to-end -end cloud VPN service orchestration. The idea is to create a very agile environment where we can have very uh, dynamic and on-demand services for cloud VPN. The idea of a cloud VPN is that I can turn up, uh, I can cr connect all of my corporate sites uh, via a VPN service and then I can deploy new value-added services over that VPN to the corporate sites and all to be done in a matter of uh, minutes and seconds with the ability to add and remove value-added services through that. The orchestrator is a key enabler for this. Uh, we have, uh, in this picture, we show that we have an end-to-end -end orchestrator that goes over the network, which shows uh, an integration of two controllers. One of the controllers is over an IP RAN network, and the second controller is looking at an IP core. We also have a VNFM, which is a virtual network function manager, which is taking care of the management of the firewall and the DHCP service. So we're going to provide an overview and a, de and a video of this uh, today and how we achieve this in the orchestration. OK, so let's talk about lifecycle service orchestration. Lifecycle service orchestration is the process by which we can introduce a new service offering uh, quickly into the orchestration environment. And then we can uh, configure that service offering to a very fine-grained uh, service offering based on the operator's uh, specific characteristics and attributes. And then what we'll show is the final step is to be able to provision and activate that for a tenant within the uh, operator in network, in a network environment, including uh, adding up and spinning up the value-added services for that tenant. Okay, so the, one of the key uh, characteristics of an orchestrator is the rapid introduction of new services. In this case, in this example, we're actually using Yang as a means to model the service in a very rich uh, context. So we can go to a very fine-grained, very, and we can uh, model a very complex service using Yang, and we can decide exactly what uh, capabilities of the network can be exploited in the uh, service offering. So the, there's a number of steps that are very important from the orchestration perspective. The first step is that we model the service in Yang. Uh, as I say, this is a hierarchical service model, and it allows us to model all of the different layers and all the technologies involved in that service. Then we import that Yang into the uh, orchestrator to an import capability. So the orchestrator itself is meta-model driven. It's capable of, of uh, interpreting the, mo the service that's been modeled in Yang. And then we auto-generate a northbound API from the service model which we just built. So the idea is to avoid manual tasks in this process. You can auto-render, auto-generate, and automatically import into the runtime uh, orchestration the service models. Then we also, in order to connect with the network layer and, and the uh, resource layer we have in, uh, for the cloud VPN, we need to configure the, uh, the mappings to the southbound API. Okay. So this is just going through the various steps. We can show that we, when we import the Yang uh, into, the, into the orchestrator, we convert it into an internal model representation. Then we uh, map that into the southbound, into the network and the resource layer. And this is essentially what the service uh, uh, offering in this demonstration uh, consists of. So we talk about the service that uh, transits from the branch site across the IP RAN and the IP core it uses a layer two VPN, it uses a layer three VPN in the IP core, and then in the data center we'll be running uh, certain uh, uh, value added services. So there's a lot of, of characteristics, attributes, specifications that need to be set up inside of the service definition and template. And what we tried to do is we configure the, the service in the access, and we have some common uh, specifications for the uh, VPN service itself, and then we have domain specific uh, specifications for both the layer 2 VPN and the layer 3 VPN. Okay. Finally then, once we've got the connectivity in place, which is what the previous slide was showing, we are talking about how we actually 
design the service components that, that make up the virtual network functions. So the functions we, and the applications we want to give to the operator. So in this case, we're talking about a virtual firewall and a virtual DHCP that will run in the data center. So we're going to connect the corporate sites to the data center where the, where the, where the services are actually running, the value-added services. Okay? And this again is done in a model-driven approach. This was done in conjunction with a partner uh, who provided that capability. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay. So the tenant cell service is then the final goal for this, and effectively to make it very point and click capability for the tenant to be able to turn up and add new sites uh, for the tenant. So if the site, if a tenant uh, wants to create a brand new uh, site in, in a different uh, uh, in a different city or a different location, basically they have, should have a very simple way of adding new sites and adding the applications for, the, for that tenant to the, to the thing. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the demonstration of the Cloud VPN, the end-to-end -end service, and I'll take you through the different steps. So the first, uh, the first step is to look at the cross-domain uh, configuration. So what we're doing is we're setting up a cross-domain uh, uh, parameters for the uh, VPN service. Um, this, in this example, I've al already imported the service definition as we described in the uh, presentation earlier. So I'm creating a layer two VPN plus a layer three VPN common attributes for the service and common specifications for those services. So this is very helpful in, in uh, reducing the amount of configuration you need to do for the individual domains. Okay, so the very first thing I'm gonna choose is uh, the type of topology we want in the network. Uh, I'll choose the service type, uh, it's MPLS in this case, and the total bandwidth that we're looking to create on the service itself. Okay. Next, I'm going to add uh, the address pool uh, and where the address pools for the IP addresses come from. Um, and then I'm going to configure the CIOR and other parameters that are relevant for the service. So I can do this to a very fine-grained approach. It's basically down to what I, expo I expose within the service model and my templates for the service definition itself. Okay. So in this case, I'm setting the upper bandwidth uh, threshold for the service. And now I'm going to configure uh, the protection mode for the service. So in this case, I'm not going to choose any protection mode. I will just uh, uh, leave it for the moment. OK. And then finally, uh, in this uh, demo, what I'm going to provide is the uh, routing constraints. And I'm going to choose the shortest path constraint for the policy. Obviously, I have a number of different options I can choose for that. Um, OK. So that's the configuration of the uh, cross-domain policies. Um, next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at defining a single domain policy. So this is where you take those cross-domain policies, but you further refine them for the individual domain, so for the IP RAN or the IP core. And in this case, I will actually inherit quite a lot from the uh, common uh, cross-domain uh, specifications. So I'm choosing a point-to-point -point, -point, layer 2 VPN uh, for the IP RAN. And then I'm going to default a lot of these parameters for the IP RAN uh, in the, uh, if, take them directly from the common uh, uh, configurations. Now I'm moving on to the IP core, and I'll do the same. I'll specify some uh, characteristics that are specific to the IP core. In this case, full mesh and IPv3, uh, or layer 3 VPN. Um, and then I go through. So now, basically what I've done is I've configured a lot of the uh, characteristic specifications that make up my service. So I'm ready now to uh, create the cross-domain and validate the, the cross-domain service. So what I'm doing is I will choose a customer. I will choose the uh, layer two and layer three VPN uh, cross-domain capability, and I will do create. So now I'm into the service provisioning steps of the, uh, for the service. I'm going to add a site and uh, configure the layer three VPN for that site. And this is in the IP core. I'm setting up the different parameters I need, which are customer specific. Uh, so I'm setting up the static routing for the customer. Layer three VPN. So that's the IP core now uh, configuration now uh, set up. And then I move on to the uh, IP RAN layer two VPN configuration. So I'm setting the VLAN ID. I'm also specifying the uh, IP address and port for the, key, the CE. The, um, now I've got the two configurations established for both domains, and I'm going to calculate the root options between the two uh, domains. 
So what it's done here is it's actually calculated the options for me. I can now see that I have my IP core connected to my IP RAN over a link that connects these two domains. So now we're ready uh, with this service to uh, provision and activate that service. You'll just see here before I do that, you can see there are different link options. The system has discovered the link options that can connect these two domains effectively. So in this network, it's got two options. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to activate this service. So we're going to activate the VPN. You can see we've the layer two and layer three activa service activated, and here it goes up. So we can see that the status of the of the service is now up. Okay. So now we have a real service uh, up and running for the connectivity, and we've connected the, the customer the customer sites together. And now what we want to do is the value added service. So. That now we've got the connectivity. Now we need to add the, the firewall and the, and the virtual DCP service, OK? OK, so this, uh, again, this, uh, the adding the VAS is, is using a template-based model-driven approach where we have modeled out the different virtual uh, functions and the, and the function chains within the uh, template. And now what we're doing, well, first we need to create a virtual data center in which uh, we can run this for the customer. So we create a virtual data center, we activate the data center for the customer, and then what we do is we, uh, we want to go ahead and create an instance of that data center for that customer. So in this case, we're using Huawei's uh, solution for this. But the, again, the system is agnostic and can work across any vendor system, this demo as well. So we're deploying that uh, data center, and we also are showing that we've Two virtual machines working here, virtual instances uh, working for that. So we have two VNFs, and we've got the uh, virtual firewall and the virtual DHCP working for that uh, customer. OK, so then uh, finally we can query uh, the system. We can understand what the performance of the virtual instances are. The last step in this is that now we've got all this infrastructure set up, everything's ready to go. Uh, we should be able to provide a simple tenant-based view for the cloud VPN service in which the tenant themselves can actually uh, configure new sites and add new sites. Okay, now that we've shown that we how we can introduce a new service type, service offering, we can now show an example of a tenant uh, uh, portal where the tenant can quickly and easily uh, configure their service offering. So um, the first thing the tenant will do is he'll choose to add a new site for their, for their existing service. In this case, we're adding a site in Beijing, and we're specifying the minimum parameters that we need for that uh, to connect to that site, basically. Okay. So through this type of portal, we can expose whatever we want the tenant to be able to configure themselves. That can be a lot of information or a small amount of information. So in the next step, we're going to show and this, uh, how we create the virtual data center for this site. Uh, in this case, again, we're configuring the virtual data center instance. And then we're setting up the subnet to connect the uh, various sites to the data center itself. OK. So now we've got a number of virtual machines running in the data center, and they're connected to the sites. Our next, uh, next we deploy the site to site and the site to DC uh, VPN service for that customer. That means activating an, uh, that site into the network. Okay. So here we can see a graphical view of the two sites that are connecting to the data center. So the corporate uh, environment is now set up for the for the customer itself. Okay. Okay. So we've instantiated that service uh, with, for the customer. Now we're going to add the virtual DHCP and the virtual firewall service for that customer. OK, so we're going to specify some parameters in relation to the uh, DHCP and the IP addresses and the gateways, etc. And then we're also going to do something where, we're, where we uh, submit and provision the firewall and the v VH, uh, DHCP service. Okay. And that really completes it. So we can decide exactly uh, how much granularity we want to give to the tenant in order to configure their service. So we could keep it very high level. And this is all part of the power of the 
model-driven approach for the service uh, modeling within the orchestration. Thank you very much. We're delighted to be able to share this at the OPNFE event. Thank you. Mm -hmm.